Okay guys, good morning. It is Tuesday. It's pretty early. It's like nine o'clock. Uh, as you can probably see, it's a tad cloudy and foggy. That meant Marine 2 could not take off today from the Naval Observatory and we had a motorcade to Andrews Air Force Base for the Vice President. The Vice President's off to Albuquerque and Seattle today, so she'll be out of town for a few days. I, on the other hand, have to run back home. My kid forgot some of his homework and I gotta run it to school. And the joys of being a dad. But we'll be right back downtown here and show you more of DC in just a minute. This is the Martin Luther King Memorial. And it's also where I parked my car. <laughs> so we'll take a look at that and then we'll go get my car. Hey guys, so uh, heading downtown and got an alert, another bank robbery. Yeah, I don't know what it is, people robbing banks. You know, we've had an armed robbery at a bank up here in the Shaw neighborhood. Let's go check that out and then we'll go start our day, yeah? Okay, so in the 1400 block of 7th Street, or the 1900 block, somewhere around, 17th and T. T's about the 19th letter, yeah? Anyway, uh, Wells Fargo Bank, guy walked in with a gun this morning, demanded cash, got about two grand in cash, and uh, it skedaddled. Uh, cops have responded. This happened about 15, 20 minutes ago. Let's go up and see what it looks like. Then I'm going to take you downtown. I'm going to show you some cool stuff today. Israeli Prime Minister is in town. We'll see his motorcade going to the White House. And, well, who knows what else we'll see. It's a pretty day. So the police are over there. Uh, I don't see the FBI yet. They should arrive. FBI always comes to these uh, bank robberies. This is two in one week. It's kind of a busy, busy time for bank robberies in DC, I guess. This guy drove his car right up on the sidewalk. So there's the bank. And right here is a portable security camera. They literally had one across the street from the bank that was robbed. Those guys look like FBI. Well, this is kind of a rough area. It looks like the FBI showed up because there's these dudes at the door who look kind of FBI-like. But I don't see their vehicles or anything. Not like the one in DuPont Circle last week where they came flying into the area. It's just kind of chill. Hey guys, we are uh, think we fixed the audio problems for the moment. We're down by the Willard Hotel, which is a sea of snowplows. They are locked up back to back. And these are how the district does portable, portable security. Oh, this is a biodiesel snowplow, B100. I don't know what that is. Back by the snow plows. Let's go take this bike up to the north north side of the White House. We still have an hour and ten minutes to go. We'll go wander around and get a sandwich or something. I think the motorcade is exiting shortly, so let's let's go over there. It really looked like they were setting up. And I don't think they're setting up for something in the next hour or two. I think they're setting up for something now. All right, so a motorcade prep down there. And I think they're just gonna go up the street and then turn onto Pennsylvania Avenue. We'll see if Pennsylvania Avenue is still open. Usually they shut that down oh, about an hour before. It looks like there's still tourists going in. So let's, uh, let's take advantage of that. Maybe we'll see, uh, I don't know if they're going to be setting up a full military honors kind of arrival. Oof. That well, looks like the Uyghurs are out here. Guy's wearing a cow outfit. 
right. This will get closed down shortly. We should probably see a bunch of uh, TV, maybe even protesters. Yep, we got some pro Uyghur protesters today. Does not look like we're going to get a formal arrival ceremony, at least not here on the north side. Oh, school tour group. Smile. Maybe we're going to do a South Lawn arrival. Let's go take a look. Oh, he's in the South Court Auditorium, so we've got a 17th Street closure right now. I'm to go back up there now. Happiness in a paper bag. All right, that was a good, good burger. I might have missed the motorcade, but hey, I, it was worth it, yeah? <laughs> a lot of you remark about how many cars are in the motorcade. You count 18, 20, 30 cars in a motorcade. But what you don't count are these police cars that are at every intersection. Every intersection between where the motorcade starts and the motorcade ends. That can be a hundred vehicles. Easily a hundred vehicles blocking off all the roads between here and Andrews Air Force Base or some other part of DC. It's a massive effort for the president or vice president to go pretty much anywhere. That guy's got a good view. Okay, so that was a quick meeting at the White House. I think the motorcade has already left. I'm back downtown because I just discovered something. Ford's Theater is open today. Yeah, I can get a ticket. So let's go take a look at the place where Abraham Lincoln was shot. Okay, guys, we're going in. It actually was free. Yeah, they didn't charge me, but you can give a donation. So we have to start with the museum. Well, that's his... Uh, his face and his hands. So we go down to the museum first. We are in the basement of Ford's Theater now. Of course, there's a bookshop. <laughs> cabinet back then. Office seekers trying to get jobs when Lincoln came to power. A quilt. This is a quilt made by famous people signed. So like Longfellow, the poet, is up at the top there. Let's see if we can zoom in. What else do we have this for? See us we recognize. Mostly political guys. Andrew Johnson. Sorry. So there's Abraham Lincoln's signature. Where's Andrew Johnson? There's Andrew Johnson, Vice President, 1964. Pretty cool. Uh, Fort Sumter. So this is a fragment of the flag from Fort Sumter that flew on the beginning of the Civil War. 
this is all about McClellan and the battles. Oh, there's the Lincoln China. I think I saw that when we went on the tour of the American history. That's the oval platter, and we saw the other silver sets that match that. Mary Todd Lincoln. Hmm. Emancipation Proclamation. This is the Emancipation Proclamation in German, but as a, it's written. See, it's all actually written, but it's done as like an art different colors, so his face appears inside the Emancipation Proclamation, an artistic copy created by William Pratt, a clerk from Iowa who did heavier pen strokes to make that illusion of him coming through. That's some pretty talented artwork. <laughs> the mask of Lincoln's face, that's the calling card of Major Henry Rathbone, who was a guest of the Lincolns. Their tickets to the play on April 14th, 1865. Those are two of the tickets. There's some opera case, glass cases. And this is about Lincoln's last speech he ever made. So in here, you can't really see it that well because it's dark, but that is the pillow that Lincoln had on his head. There's blood stains. Can you see the blood stains there? And those are the blood stains of Abraham Lincoln. This is from Dr. Peterson's house, which is across the street. Okay guys, let's go up into the theater itself. There are 50 some steps up to the theater. They already gave us a warning. So some people are waiting for the elevator. Lots of steps. Okay, let's go. There's the stage, and down here is the booth. Let's go around the front. That's where he was sitting. It's quite a jump. John Wilkes Booth jumped down onto the stage from this area. Let's go inside. Booth entered here, entered the president's box. So Lincoln was on the left, Mary Todd was next to him, Rathburn and Harris were on the right. So that's the chair, guys. Right there. Sports Theater. Let's go take a look from the other side. Now this theater is still open. They still have performances here. the president's box then there was another box over there so they're setting up for Dickens a Christmas Carol yeah it's kind of a small intimate setting uh, today it seats about 650 okay. so we're done but, uh, I think I still have my ticket yeah, let's go across the street now, yeah? 
Yep. And now we go across the street to the Peterson's house, which is over here. Because this is where his body was taken. I guess we just go up the main entrance. Oh, it's the Hard Rock Cafe plane. It smells like weed here. Abraham Lincoln died in this house April 15th, 1865 at 7.22 a.m. Purchased by the U.S. in 1896. No guns. Hello. Hi, how you doing? How are you? Tired. <laughs> Tourist. Thank you. This is a Boston Corbett, Thomas Boston Corbett. He is the man who shot John Wilkes Booth from a distance of about 12 feet and uh, basically severed his spinal cord and then they burned him out. Seven weeks there was a trial, I guess it was at Fort McNair. Six votes to get the death penalty was all that was needed. After two days some were given life and some were hung. That was down at Fort McNair, which is the old, uh, was the old arsenal. Now it's Fort McNair. You can't really get in there. Hmm. The jail cell key. <laughs> wow. These are pieces of the ropes that were used in the hanging of the conspirators. Surat. At Surat, Payne, and Herod. That's little bits of the rope. Here's the hanging at Fort McNair. This is... Okay guys, so that's the videos from today. Listen, I've had some real problems with microphones the last 48 hours. A lot of choppy poppy noises. It's, it's been a real pain. I'm gonna be working on a solution. I'll keep making videos. Uh, might miss a few things here and there because of that. Anyway, thanks for uh, sticking around and watching this video today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be making another video. Hopefully the sound will work a lot better. I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.